The market shoots to new all-time highs and into resistance. How high can they fly? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, our primary path was looking for a move down. However, I said if they were unable to break support, we should be looking to the 5017 area next. And that's exactly what we saw as the bears were unable to break support and the bulls squeezed them up to the 5020 area. Now, the question is, how high can the bulls fly? I'll get into that in just one second. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups and our buy alerts. All right, guys, with the bulls pushing higher, we do have a confirmed path now. So let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one hour futures chart for the S&P 500. And the bears were unable to push down at all. The bulls gapped it up, took it over 5,000 to new all time highs, up to that 5017 area we've been talking about, where if the uh, bulls could hold support, it would likely be our next target area. We saw them get up there and chop and hold that resistance. So one thing I want to go over before we get into the breakdown is how do we find resistance when we're at new all time highs? Because normally you'd have like this high here. Okay. The market would move down. You come back up. And when you get to this area, you would expect that to be resistance, which it was, you can see we chopped here for a little bit, pulled back and then went higher. So we had resistance because we knew where the last resistance was and where to expect that. But when you're at all time highs, you don't have that. There's nothing over here to give you a reference point. So how do we figure that out? And this is where Elliott Wave gives you a big advantage and you understanding FIB levels and how to measure them and how to get them. This is where it gives you a big advantage. 5017 is the 2.0 extension of waves one and two off the low. On top of that, one way to measure a wave five is to measure from the low, so the start of the entire move, up to the top of wave three, down to the bottom of wave four here, so you measure from the low here to the top and then down to four. That gives you your fibs here. And if you come up, generally wave five targets around the 5.5 .5 to 618 extensions uh, of that measurement. Well, that comes in at 50.18.50. The 2.0 is at 50.17.50, so you have confluence there. Additionally, if you measure from the low back at the bottom from one all the way up to three down to this four, you get these fibs over here, and it's 618 comes in at 5025, which is a little bit higher, but gives you pretty much a trading zone here of 5017.50 to 5025.50. And there's a lot of confluence in that area for us to have resistance. So this is an Elliott Wave advantage uh, of understanding where and how to measure things and how to use fibs to give yourself the next targets higher so that you can understand where the confluence is, where the, the resistance is when you don't have reference points on the chart. So we got to 5017.50. The market has chopped there a little bit um, most of the rest of the day. Got there early, poked higher a couple of times, but mostly chopped in that area. And now from here, it's really going to depend on if we have a four or five left in us or if they're ready to start a pullback. Now, here is the caveat about pullbacks. When we talk about pullbacks, what I mean is the conditions are correct for a pullback. For instance, I lived in Las Vegas, always dry, always sunny. However, sometimes, and when it does rain, you get those monsoons. And so before those monsoons, you'll get a flash flood watch. Now, a flash flood watch doesn't mean it's flooding if you look outside. It means that the conditions are right for a flood. So you should be prepared. And that's all we're doing is being prepared for the next move. Conditions are right for a pullback, so we're looking for one. We play the percentages and what happens more often than not. And in these instances, based on our indicators and fibs, we look for a pullback. So... The overall theme of the market is as long as we are above support, pressure remains up. As long as we are below resistance, pressure remains down. As long as you understand those two things, you'll be okay. So we push higher here because we stayed above support. I highlighted support yesterday. We stayed above that, so we pushed up to the next target. And until we break that, we'll continue to push up. Now we have pushed into the next resistance area. So as long as we're below that resistance area, now we can look for pressure to be down for a pullback. So we're in that resistance area, 5025, 5017. The question is, do we have a one more of these kind of moves back up towards 5040, which would pull SPX up over 5,000, the SPY up to 500, and get everybody happy at that big round number? Or do we have a little bit of a, a push left here, just kind of more directly up into that 5025 area and then down? Okay, 
those would be the two next bullish type paths that we would look for. Now for the bears, okay, they are going to need to come back down and break 4077 and then 4055. Below this area right here, essentially, this is the bear area. Below this and the bears can start to get something going and come back and potentially test this fed low or even more than that, just kind of depending on where we're at and what kind of structure we get. But this, that little area right there, that 4975 to 4955 area is the support. If that breaks, we should test this 4940 area and break that. 4930 is next and then the fed lows. But breaking this upper support area would be the first step for the bears to start a bigger pullback. So it's pretty easy from here. We have a clear path now. We're not kind of waffling here sideways like we were for a few days here, trying to understand which way we we're going to break. The price action is not the prettiest to the upside, but they did break out, so we have to respect price. Again, we can see a little bit of a pullback here. And then up to complete that at 50.25, we could see a little bit of a push directly higher. Or they could leave the SPX at the altar, 11 cents short of 5,000, and just go straight down and start breaking support. But again, the key factor, guys, support has to break before we get any kind of major indication of a pullback. Over on the NASDAQ. Okay, so the NASDAQ played some catch-up, and it is at new highs as well. The NASDAQ is going to have some trouble from 17,898 to 18,000. This is the resistance zone on the NASDAQ. So we could see a little bit of a push higher on the NASDAQ into that zone. Then we should see a pullback testing the 17,796 area. If they break back down below 17,733 on the NASDAQ, basically below this ledge here that they built, if they break down below that, that is a warning that they are trying to top or trying to pull back, and we should see a bigger move to the downside at that point. And again, depending on the structure, we can get targets, but at least to test this low from back on the Fed day. So the NASDAQ's looking to continue its push up towards the 17,900 area. They might have come up just short. They would like to hit at least the 1.0 here, but more, more preferably the 18,000 area at the 1,236 extension, and then pull back from there. And as long as they can hold 17,733, then the NASDAQ does remain in a bullish posture to the upside, targeting the 18,164 area and 18,300 area overall if they can continue to play out the pattern. Again, support will be the indicator of that. 17,733 is our current support level on the NASDAQ. So as long as they remain above the 17,733 level, then we would be looking for the NASDAQ to continue uh, to the 18,000 area and then pull back a little bit back towards the 178 area. But if they cannot, we would look for a breakdown that would come down and at least test the Fed lows. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It'll take you right over to the website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible monthly plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial. And that's because I want you to get in there and become part of our trading team. I want you to see how it works. Make sure it's for you. Make sure you understand it. Make sure you like me and the room before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. We have our Elliott Wave Advanced course wrapping up this weekend that will be published, but right now everyone who is a monthly member gets this course right here for free. We go through all of the complex patterns that Elliott Wave highlights and how to measure them, how to understand them, what goes on with them. I go over how to trade Elliott Wave so that you can understand that. A bunch of incredible material in here, guys. It's just about done. It's a long process because these are advanced concepts. They're harder to find in the markets and harder to explain, so the videos do take a little while to get done. But I want to be in-depth, and I want to make sure you understand it. And as you can see on the screen, people are really loving it, and this course is going to be amazing. And remember, if you're a member right now, you, you can have access to this course immediately. Now, we also have our Elliott Wave for Beginners online course. This course is helping re real traders make real money and finally understand a market in a way that makes sense. It can be very hard when good news makes the market go down and bad news makes the market go up. And that's because Elliot knew that the news cycles meant nothing and that price and key levels mattered. He knew what happened when they held and when they broke, and he knew what to look for after that. It makes trading much easier and less stressful, and it gives you a huge advantage over the rest of the market. It is 25 videos where I go through each of your introduction, where we go through mindset and emotion, the KISS method, why it works, all that kind of stuff. Your chart setup and tools, I go through every tool you need to use with Elliott Wave why to use it, how to use it, and what to do with it. And then we go over the Elliott Wave for beginners area where I go through each of the waves 
how to look for them, how to measure them, how to understand them, how to know when they fail, how to know when they succeed, the corrective depth theory, everything you need to know to finally make sense of an irrational market. The really cool thing is if you don't want to pay the $67 for the beginner's course, it is included for free in both monthly rooms, as is the advanced course and any other training material we put out. It's an incredible value, guys. Now, our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as the training material you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ and we swing in day trade. So we do trade quite often in my room. If you're looking for futures trading, individual stocks, income trading, and advanced training, you need to check out PT's throne room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as individual stocks, income trading, which has been killing it, the reduced risk binary method, which is a trading style he uses that gets you in at a really cheap price and gets you huge multiples on your money. And it's how he structures the trades that are so unique. Something you really have to see to understand. Another reason we give you that seven day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. Key takeaways for today, as long as we are above support, pressure remains up. 49.75 to 55 is our support zone. If we are above that, pressure remains up. The next targets to the upside are 40, 50, 25. If they happen to blow through that, we'd be looking at the 50, 40 to 50, 50 area. Over on the NASDAQ, same concept. They need to hold 17, 733. As long as they're above that, we would look for them to push to the 18,000 region. A break back below that would start to indicate a bigger pullback may be in line where we at least test the Fed lows, if not more. Guys, that is your market update for today. I'll talk to you tomorrow.